Hi everybody, my name is Chris Kershisnik. I am with EXP Realty. I own the Kershisnik Group. I am a full service residential realtor, licensed in Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, and DC, and I love to help people buy and sell homes. I have been going through a buyer process or a buyer transaction and going step by step on this stuff. And the next part is what happens after we ratify a contract, okay? I did a TikTok video hoping that I could bring people over to it because over to YouTube to watch this video because I go into a little more detail. But uh, I, can, I can go into more detail on YouTube and give a little bit more nuance on, on YouTube instead of just trying to compress it into a three minute clip or something like that. So welcome everybody to my page. I uh, would like to invite you to subscribe or comment below or share this with your friends because uh, you know sharing content is, is what we should do on social media and on YouTube. Uh, that's my shameless plug. Uh, anyway, getting into the content of the video, what are we going to do after the contract is ratified? Well, what does ratified mean? Ratified means that both parties of the contract have agreed to the contract and all of its terms in writing. They've received copies and now we're moving forward as though we're going towards settlement. So it has to be in writing. All the terms must be agreed to in writing and we have to have a date of ratification. Okay. From the time we're ratified, the clock starts ticking towards settlement and towards the end of these contingencies that we've negotiated in the contract, such as your home inspection, such as your financing contingency, the HOA docs, such as appraisal, maybe a home sale contingency. All those contingencies basically start, the days start counting once we ratify. The next day is day one. So what does a buyer have to do after we ratify? A buyer, first of all, needs to get their earnest money deposit deposited, okay? Whatever the contract says, uh, either with the buyer's agent, with the settlement company, or with the listing broker, or in some cases, a builder. But that earnest money deposit, usually within three days, needs to get deposited with whoever the contract directs it to go to, okay? Um, and you don't have to worry, like I said in the previous video, you don't have to worry that money is going into the broker or title company's escrow account that is not commingled with their operating funds. It's specifically delegated for escrow accounts, so you're not going to lose that money. Okay. Um, as far as this video goes, what are we talking about as far as inspections? There's a lot of inspections that you can get. Um, there's home inspections, radon inspections wood destroying insect inspections, well and septic inspections. In some cases, we might have a mold inspection, okay? All of those are contingencies that should be negotiated in the contract. The one I want to focus in on is your inspection contingency, okay? If you have, there's, there's three things you can have. You can have just a regular home inspection, okay? A home inspection contingency, which means I have X amount of days to perform an inspection by a licensed home inspector um, and then deliver to the seller or the listing agent a list of items that I want to get repaired, okay? And your realtor will help you through that. Number two, there's the as is with inspection. So you are agreeing to buy the home in the condition that it's in, but you first want the option to get it inspected by a home inspector and then after that, um, after that inspection, you can choose to move forward with the contract or just get out, okay? Essentially, you're getting the same inspection by a home inspector that you would if you'd have gotten just the home inspection contingency, but you only have the option of taking it or leaving it. The third one is as is without inspection, okay? You're not going to get an inspection of any kind. You're just going to buy it as is. And that is for specific scenarios. I usually do not recommend that, but in a very competitive seller's market, sometimes that's how we have to structure our contracts or else we will continue to lose out on properties. 
Um, we've just gotten out of one of those periods. You're not seeing that as much anymore. Uh, and we're seeing more home inspections that are prevalent, which I think is wonderful because the seller has to deliver a better home. The buyer feels more confident in their transaction and it just ends up being a better transaction overall. I really did not like the period that we just got out of where you had to basically show buyers homes, tell them to offer as much as you possibly can, forget about a home inspection, uh, and let's pray <laughs> that it turns out all right. Uh, we did a little, a little bit better than that in most situations, but it always helps to have a home inspector look at the property and tell you it looks good or it looks bad and identify the issues that you need to look at for maintenance. So we covered the home inspection. Now, other types of inspections, a radon inspection. If you don't know what radon is, radon is a cancer causing gas that exists in the environment that comes up out of the ground into your home, especially if you have a basement or anything that disturbs the ground, the soil, okay? It's negative air pressure or a vacuum goes up out of the foundation into your home and if you, drip, if you breathe enough of it in, it's been known to cause lung cancer. The government suggests remediating radon at 0.4 or at 4.0 picoliters per million or something, but it's 4.0 picoliters. Usually, your home inspector has a radon test kit. They can either be electronic or they can be canister, but you have to set, a, set up a radon test kit in the basement and not disturb the basement, not open doors and go up and down or anything for two days. Then if it's an electronic monitor, you'll get an immediate reading. If it's a canister, you gotta send it out and get the results. And if the results are less than, than 4.0 picoliters, you usually don't have to remediate for radon. If they're more, you usually have to remediate for radon. Everybody kind of freaks out over radon, but you don't have to because remediation is around 900 to 12 or $1,500. It's kind of not invasive. And the radon remediation company usually guarantees their work. It basically involves drilling a hole in the foundation, putting a, a, a three inch PVC pipe in it, piping that out of the house, and then putting on a blower motor that is gonna suck the air out of that hole, out through your house, creating negative air pressure where the radon will escape through that pipe instead of in your house. It's, it's, it's pretty manageable to deal with, okay? Another inspection we might have is a wood destroying insect inspection. You almost always need to get a termite inspection if you're using FHA financing. With VA financing, you absolutely need to get a termite inspection. It's required by the VA and it's actually required that the seller pay for that termite inspection, which is typically 40 bucks anyway, so it's not a big deal. But a termite inspection will identify if there's not only termites, but carpenter bees of any wood destroying insect on the outside of the home. And they will require, it will require the seller to remediate for it, which typically spraying some type of pesticide to get rid of termites or carpenter bees is less than a thousand dollars anyway. So it's usually not a deal breaker. In my experience, I've seen very little termite damage to where we need to have major renovations done. Uh, in fact, I've never seen it, but we have had instances where we've had to get remediation done or get, get treatment for termites, and that's a manageable cost as well, okay? Um, if the property is on a well or septic, we're gonna wanna get a well or a septic um, inspection. There are two separate inspections. You would usually get two companies that are different. And a water inspection is just typically a water quality inspection. So the home inspector or the water company would go to the, the kitchen sink, would take water from that sink and analyze it to let you know if there's nitrites, if there's bacteria, if there are, if there's lead in the water, if there's any issues with the water. And then we would, we would negotiate a resolution towards those things, either by shocking the well with chlorine or by installing a whole house filter of some type or another or dealing with it that way and that would be negotiated with the seller back and forth so there's a difference between the water quality inspection and a well inspection a well inspection would test 
the yield of the well, how much water that well can produce. When we're talking about a well inspection, typically we're talking about that water quality inspection. The well inspection would be for the yield that's usually done when the property is first built and that usually stays stable. Uh, that's not always the case, but usually the yield on a well is pretty, pretty consistent. If you want to get a well yield test done, you're going to have to specify that in the contract. In addition to a water quality or a well test, we're going to do a septic test. And there's a couple of kinds of, sep couple kinds of septic tests as well. One is, the one I would recommend, is you get an actual septic company to come out with a camera Put it down the set, put it down your sewage system and give you a camera view of everything. They can let you know what your, what your septic levels are. They can let you know if there's any leaks in your septic field, like your, your septic line going out to the tank. They can let you know how your baffles are connected on the front and the back and they can let you know the level of solids in your septic tank. I think that's the most comprehensive one. Um, another one you can do is the walkover test or the water, the dye test, which is a septic company is going to come out with a specific dye. They're going to flush it down the toilet, give it about an hour, and then they're going to prod the septic field to see if that dye shows up anywhere. Because if, that, if, if the dye goes out to the septic field already, that means your solids in your tank are very, very, they're, they're almost full and it's not holding your septic stuff anymore, uh, which would indicate that you need to make some type of septic repair or at the very least have your septic tank pumped. Septic repairs can be costly, but usually you, you, you dig it up, you make a couple repairs to the baffle and you drain your septic tank and you're just fine. Um, mold inspection is very particular. Your mold inspection would be a, you don't just get a typical mold inspection because it's mold exists everywhere. Mold spores exist everywhere. You would get a mold inspection if there was an actual, if you had eyes on some type of moldy situation in the home, uh, then you would want to do, you would want to get a mold test administered to determine if it's, if it's bad mold. And that can get into dicey situations. Mold is a very hot button issue. And I would caution anybody to tread with care when that happens. So I know this was a little bit long-winded. Excuse them. I know this was a little bit long-winded, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, please like, comment, contact me if you have any questions. Have a great middle of the week. I hope your week is going well, and I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you very much.